At number 10 on my desktop countdown list is search. Searching has been improved throughout the application. For example, there are 4,634 projections we ship with ArcGIS. I need to find the one I want fast. New in 10.1, I simply search for web and quickly narrow down my results to the one I'm looking for. <laughs> search gets better with spatial filtering. So for this, for example, I'll search for UTM, and I get back a ton of results. By enabling the spatial filter, I can narrow down my choices to only the projections that fall within my map extent. <laughs> We've included spatial filtering in the search window as well, as you can see here, along with spatial keyword support, meaning is data in or near a specific location. Here, I'm going to search for wind generation data near Stowe, Vermont. I get a list of place names to choose from, select the one I want, my map zooms in, and I get focused results for that location. Searching in 10.1 saves you more time. Number nine on our list has to do with editing. It can be really important to know who created what and when. Editor tracking in 10.1 allows me to create a new critical habitat location and have that editor information maintained for me by the application. <laughs> this also works when updating existing features. Here, I'll split a polygon, and the last editor information is updated again for me. Now, since this is a property of the Geo database, it can be accessed across the entire system here in the desktop, out in the field with mobile, or even online. Our next four enhancements all focus on geoprocessing. Here, I have a directory of geotagged photos that I want to display on my map. Our number eight feature is the new geotagged photos to points tool. This tool makes it really straightforward to take, to take that folder and then display them on my map. It creates points from the geotagged locations and attaches the photos as geodatabase attachments that I can now access anywhere. <laughs> Number seven is the new GPX to Features tool. This tool makes it much easier to take your GPS data from the field and load it directly into ArcGIS. It takes the waypoints, track points, and routes, displays them on my map that I can now select to access the detailed information of that file. Next, I'm going to take you on an African safari inside the Zakuma National Park here in Chad. Our number six improvement provides improved support for KML files inside of ArcMap. The KML to Layers tool now supports the symbols, labels, and HTML pop-ups coming directly from your KML files. Next helps you make multi-scale maps. It's our number five feature. Here, I have a highway interchange along with building footprints in the surrounding area. 10.1 has two new generalization tools inside the cartography toolbox called the Collapse Road Detail and Delineate Built Up Areas. To help see the results of these tools, I'll open up a viewer window to get a side-by-side -side comparison. As I zoom out, my complex road detail collapses, meaning my on and off ramps become simplified while maintaining the road connectivity. Zooming out again, my building footprints become generalized into urban areas, as you see here in the light and dark orange. These tools automate a once manual process. Administering your enterprise geodatabases has always been challenging using the command line, which brings us to our number four feature, and it happens to be my personal favorite. 10.1 introduces a brand new user interface for administering your enterprise geodatabases. This dialog gives me a clear view of my versions, allows me to view, 
even disconnect connections, and helps me manage all the locks on my geodatabase. This dialogue, along with the new geodatabase administration tool set, make it really easy and straightforward to manage your enterprise geodatabases. Number three is about labeling. Here I have a geology map, and I have my features labeled. However, I have a dense area of polygons here that remain unlabeled. A new option on the labeling toolbar in 10.1 is called key numbering, which, when enabled, creates a key number table that references numeric values on the map. This allows me to place more descriptive text on my maps. For number two, we're going to switch over to the layout view, looking at the same geology map. Here I have a beautiful layout with a rather complex legend. Typically, when I zoom in, the legend remains the same. However, in 10.1, as I zoom in, the legend updates automatically. This is especially relevant for those out there creating map books. We've now reached our number one desktop improvement for 10.1. It's something you've seen and heard all morning, but it's important. And that's the new Share As menu. This menu makes it really straightforward to web enable your maps, data, and tools. I get a wizard driven dialog that takes the map from my desktop and publishes it to your server or the cloud seamlessly. The workflow is the same whether I'm sharing a map, some data as a layer package, or even a geoprocessing model. And there you have it, your top 10 desktop improvements coming in 10.1.